What's going on guys, this is Kazi. Welcome back to another epic video. Today, we're gonna to be creating a look from Suicide Squad 2. Saw the trailer a couple of days ago, absolutely loved it. I picked two frames, so today we're gonna to be doing this frame right here, and then eventually we'll do a part two on this guy. I feel like it looks absolutely stunning. Let's rate this look really quick. So in versatility, I will give it about a 6.5. I feel like this is closer to what Marvel has been doing, which in a way it looks sort of natural, but there is still this push. In terms of style, I will also give it about 6.5. It's not push like Zack Snyder's Justice League, so I feel like, again, going back to that Marvel comment. And then in terms of longevity, once again, I'll give it 6.5 because I just feel like it can last for a while. I mean, it's, this style is not really going anywhere. So moving forward, we're going to be doing a lot of look recreations and it will be very helpful if you drop a comment below and make a suggestion. Doesn't matter. It could be a TV commercial, movie, uh, your Netflix series, whatever have you, drop a comment below. Most people explain ACES in ways that turn it into rocket science. I'm here to change that. This webinar is gonna be broken into three main steps. Number one, what is ACES and why you should care. Number two, how to set up your project in ACES. Number three, how to grade your footage in ACES. I guarantee you, after you're done watching the training, you will be ready to grade your first project in ACES from start to finish. We will end the session with an extensive FAQs. Click the link below to sign up and I will see you in the training. And guys, just remember with the movie look series or look recreation series, our goal is to show you a bunch of different ways to get the look. OK, it's not a one to one match. We're not going to just take that. Oh, this bike has a green color. Let me swing my cyan and turn it into that green. That's not the point of this, because I feel like it becomes sort of juvenile when you go to that level and you become a full on copycat. So anytime we do look recreations, they're more of an inspiration than, say, a one to one match. So keeping that in mind, if you're enjoying the content, it will mean the world to us if you smash that like button. Subscribe to my channel for more awesomeness. Make sure you're following me on Instagram. Let's roll the intro. All right, guys, let's get this party started. So this is going to be our inspiration. And the first thing that I want to do is just type in color palette in our OFX, drop it on, and let's just look at the color story real quick. All right, let's pull this up. We can keep it right here while we look at this. So obviously we don't necessarily see a pure black. I mean, the entire image is kind of lifted and you can see it here, right? And the highlights are borderline blown out. I mean, nothing is really blown out, but still like really on the cusp up top. When you see the parade looking like this, that just means that, you know, the highlights are really warm and we can see that there's less blue, meaning there's more yellow because the subtraction of blue adds more yellow. And then we have green and then red up top to just keep them warm, okay? If the red was down and the green was up, it would be super sickly looking, all right? The bottom is pretty even. We see the red, green, and blue right there. So that could be seen right here in the hair. So that's looking proper. So our black points, our anchors are looking pretty good there. And we can even see it right here, how it's kind of white around this area, meaning like our black points are proper and then all the jiggery pokery, all the color happens right here. A couple of things that you need to understand is the location, the set design, the art direction, all of that jazz, right? So of course, you know, there's warmth added in the grade um, in here and the window and everything, but the building and the walls still has that color, okay? So don't forget that. Also, in the entire trailer, what I noticed is that her skin is super pale. So I know for a fact that that was makeup. So she is looking super, super pasty, white. It's not like they keyed that out and kept the lips and the hair the same. So the skin actually is paler than her actual skin color. And that makes it easy to then just pop the colors and not have to worry about it because majority of that work is done on set and through makeup art direction and all that good stuff. So these things are very important to know because what we're going to be creating, I need you to keep that in the back of your head when we're building our grade. 
that out of the way now what i'm going to do is i'm going to go back to my shot this is the shot that we're going to be working with and let's just pause it at a hero frame and it's going to be somewhere around here let's just pick this frame this is where i'm going to park it and uh we're going to start building our look right here okay so my reference is right here and i can bring it up as a split screen especially in the beginning when i'm building my grade i like to use this and then at the end i like to just do like a swipe and just make sure everything looks proper so we got a long way to go my project is set up in ASUS CCT pipeline. If you want to learn more about that, I have a video down below in the description. You can click on it. It's a free one hour webinar that's going to teach you everything that you need to know to get started with ASUS. So what we're going to do is uh, the footage is shot in red helium in 8K and uh, it's properly converted to Rec. 7 or 9. So if I do before, this is log and then this is our proper conversion. So that's our starting point. Not bad but we still got a long way to go to get this grade. So this is, I'm gonna, again, keep it pretty simple like my last tutorial. This is going to be a simple four node node tree. And let's start off with our second node where we're gonna do our custom curves, all right? I wanna dial in my initial contrast by using custom curves. So I'm gonna pull this up. I'm gonna go in here. And uh, let's just look at it, right? Like, let's just buy a little bit more real estate. So I'm going to push this over like this. That's looking pretty good. And uh, now what I want to do is I'm going to start dialing my contrast in. So what I see is that the contrast is kind of compressed, right? So nothing is going down this line right here and nothing is going above that. So let's keep this in mind. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this up a little bit. I'm going to bring this down quite a bit. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my highlights and I'm going to start cranking them up. Uh, I'm going to keep it somewhere around here. And then I'm going to take my toe and I'm going to start pulling it in. Okay. And I'm going to create another point right here. And that like really helps us dial this entire thing in. And all of a sudden our colors and everything is looking much more saturated. I'm, I'm happy with what's happening here. What we can do is we can take this point and start extending it out. You know, because this is kind of like in your face, really, really jarring. So we can, let's just create one more point and keep expanding that. So let's go too far and then bring it in. So even something like that is looking pretty good. And we can obviously see, like, look at this, right? So my contrast next to this contrast right here, like our reference, we're already looking pretty good. So I'm going to leave that there for now. Now let's go in here. And all we're going to do is we're going to start off with our printer light. So just keep your eyes in here on the offset. I'm going to try to do majority of the heavy lifting to get somewhat of the look in by using my offset. Okay, so I'm going to start adding some red. So let's keep that here. And now I'm going to add some green and uh, let's just add a little bit of blue. And already, like if I do before and after, just look at how much of that work is done and like how we have these greens coming in all of a sudden. And all was done by hitting a couple of keys and you can activate your printer lights right here. OK, so just click on this guy, printer light hotkeys. And then you can see the hotkeys here. You can hit that on your numpad and then uh, you can do the same thing what I just did. So we're already in a pretty good spot. This doesn't look bad. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little bit of a lift gamma gain dance and like try to open up my image because I feel like right now it's just kind of contrasty compared to what we got going on here. So I'm going to take my gain and pull it down. I'm going to take my gamma and lift it up a little bit and then take my gain and bring it down again maybe keep it somewhere around here and what we're really doing is we're opening up our image how it's opened up here now i will take my lift and i'm going to pull it down because we still want to keep some saturation now guys ultimately the goal of all our look recreations is not a one-to-one -one mindless match because that makes no sense the whole idea is to teach you guys how can we get a similar vibe, a similar look, and what are the characteristics of each look? This is just more like using references as our inspiration and then go from there, okay? So 
already we're opening up the image. It's looking pretty good. I'm going to do gamma up, gain down a little bit more. Let's keep it somewhere around here and then lift. Let's pull the lift down. Let's just leave it here for now. So not bad at all. All right. This is where we are right now. Obviously, we still got long ways to go. Uh, so what do we need to do now? A couple of things that I can do uh, to like really start dialing in the look is go under my gamma and take some of this like overall green out and start putting in some of that teal tones. All right. So I'm going to pull my gamma down and you can see that already we're kind of going there. Right. So like if I do before and after, we're bringing in those tones and it didn't even take that much to get that going. I'm going to go under my log wheels. I'm going to open up my high range. So I'm going to pull this down to around 450 ish. And now all I'm going for is this right here. I want to add that warmth in my highlights and look how easy it's going to be. I'm going to be using my highlights right here and just watch this. I'm going to add some warmth by reducing my blue channel. I'm going to take my red and crank it up. And I'm going to take my green and I'm going to pull it down to add some magenta. And if we look at this right here to that right there, we're really getting in that ballpark. I'm going to take my blue and I'm going to keep bringing it down. And like, obviously, look at this to that. And we're looking pretty good. Let's take the magenta, pull it down. We're looking even closer, looking really good. And if I do before and after, like, see, it adds like a really nice split toning effect without overdoing it. And it's bringing everything else together as well. OK, I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so we have a bit more real estate. Now, the thing that really is going to sell the effect is going to be getting the black points right. So like right now, we're seeing the blacks are still kind of off, right? We have a lot of teal in our blacks. So let's fix that. So I'm going to go under my log wheels. I'm going to take my shadows and try to even them out a little bit. OK, so even this did a lot. And now I'm going to Keep moving until everything starts to look pretty good. And this is already looking way better. I'm going to do the same thing with my mid-tone. So if I do before and after, that's a big difference, okay? And even if I do this, you know, where we started to where we ended up, and what we're creating is like it's coming a long, long way. We still got some ways to go, but as a start off point, I feel like we've done quite a bit of work uh, with just making some changes there. OK, now in here, what I want to do is a couple of things. But before we even do that in my custom curves, I want to go in and I want to use my HSLs to like really dial in some other colors, too. So I'm going to take my yellow and I'm going to kind of pull it up to like bring in even some of these tones right here like in my yellow. So I'm going to keep it somewhere around here. So if I do before and after, it's looking really nice. And then what do we want to do with our red? So a couple of things that we want to do with our red, we do want to get it really close to this. So I'm going to go under hue versus luminance. I'm going to take my red and like really push it down. So already it's looking pretty close. I'm going to go under hue versus saturation and I'm going to start cranking it up. And like now we really got that red action going on. OK, that we see here. So that's looking really good. Even like this color is matching really, really close to what's going on over here. One thing that we can do with that is go back in our log wheels and I feel like go easy on the magenta. So I'm going to bring back some of these like really warm tones instead of like this magenta color that we had going on. So now it's looking even better. And if I pull back and look at what we are creating, I mean, guys, we're coming a very long way. Let's go back in our curves. Hue versus hue. Let's take our cyan and start dialing in some of these colors. So I'm going to pull it a little bit and then I'm going to take my blue and I'm going to do the same thing again. Just trying to get the vibe down, right? Just trying to get the vibe down. If you squint your eyes and kind of look at the two, they started to come together, right? Now let's do some fun stuff. So I'm going to go in here under luminance versus saturation. I'm going to play around with these two, sat versus sat two, and see what is happening with each one. So if I take this right here and start raising it, basically I'm taking our low saturated areas and pumping more saturation in there. And then on the opposite spectrum, I'm taking more saturated areas and pulling saturation out of it. 
but I don't want to do that. So I'm going to bring this up, keep it somewhere around here. Now let's go in here, luminance versus sat. So if I take this area right here and pull it down, now I'm taking my highlights and desaturating them, which again, I don't want to do too much, but I can keep it somewhere around here. And then luminance versus saturation on the shadow area, what do we want to do? We actually want to add a bit more color. Like we really want to make it pop. Once again, not going for a one-to-one -one match. We're trying to like really push the image and create something that just we weren't able to unless we had a reference image, okay? So this is really, I mean, just look at that. Just look at this, what we created right here. No LUTs, nothing. Just with our HSL curves and custom curves. So that's the power of knowing your tools inside out, the kind of stuff that you can do. OK, and that's also the power of using an inspiration, not becoming a copycat, but just taking this and then elevating your game based on what's happening here. Right. So this is looking pretty good so far. What else do I want to do? Is there anything else here that I want to change? I mean, I'm, I'm pretty satisfied with how everything is looking and it just belongs. Everything is hugging the frame right now. So what I'm going to do here is like one of the characteristics that I see here is that it has a lot of like softness to the image and like this blooming quality. So let's try to create that. Okay. And uh, I'm going to do it in a, in a different way where instead of like the glow as a starting point, um, I'm going to show you these techniques and they're going to be pretty cool. Okay. So let's go under our blur. I'm going to take my blur radius right here and I'm going to crank it up to around 52 ish. Okay. And if I do before and after, Let's go back in here. If I do before and after, it's very subtle. I don't think you're going to be seeing it on YouTube, to be honest with you. But trust me, even if I go right here and I do before and after, you can see this is after, this is before, after. So it's really adding to the whole effect. But you know what's really going to sell this effect is this. So we're going to go back into our primaries and I'm going to take my midtone and I'm going to crank it down to around uh, negative 50 ish. OK, and uh, maybe we can bring it to negative 40 ish. Let's not go too crazy. And now you're going to start to see the difference. If I go before and after, like see, like around her shirt before and after before, after, before, after. And now when we pull back and we look at it, it's really, really bringing it all together, okay? Like, I mean, you can start to see how it has that characteristic of like what this is, okay? Now, the final step is gonna be glow, and I'm gonna drop that on. And uh, we're gonna go in here, go back in here, and uh, let's take our composite mode and set that to soft light, and then open up our shine threshold. Now, there's a lot of new changes with the brand new version of Resolve. So now they just split it up in a bunch of different sections. Before you didn't have gain, gamma, saturation. Now you have these three new parameters under Glow that are absolutely game changer, okay? So uh, for the overall, I'm going to just kind of keep the Glow right here. And now I'm going to go under gain and I'm going to start pulling it down. All right, so I'm going to keep the gain somewhere around here. I'm going to go under gamma and I'm going to open it up. Like, look at this. We didn't have that before. And I'm going to keep the gamma somewhere around here and I'm going to take the saturation and I'm going to kill it. Maybe. Maybe keep some of the saturation in. Actually, you know what? Kill it. I don't want the saturation. So now let's uh, take the gamma, open it up, blend and just blend it a little bit. And now what? So. Let's take the threshold and keep cranking it to like really add a nice contrast. Open it up a little bit. Let's go under saturation. Keep it somewhere around here. And uh, let's see. So keep hitting this button by mistake. So like when we look at the two, like how far off are we? So I think on the saturation, we're just a bit off. So what we can do is go under my custom curves right here and 
in the luminance versus saturation, maybe grab it from here and pull this down. Keep it somewhere around here. I mean, it's looking really cinematic, like when you pull the saturation down. So I would rather keep it here. And now what's going on with our highlights in the back? Like, are we still on point? Like, are we still pretty close to what's going on here? I think we can put some color back in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go under here in my log wheels again, and I'm going to warm up my highlights a little bit more, just like what I'm doing right now. And I'm going to keep it, I'm going to keep it right here. I think we are very, very close. So if I do this and like, like, look at that, how close we are now to like when we started, look at this. So, I mean, I am genuinely very, very happy. I mean, once again, like for it to not be a one to one match and for us to just take the inspiration and create this look. And guys, don't forget the look that I just created. You can like, look at this. I mean, it's only four nodes. You can just take these and save them as a power grade and then apply this look on anything that you're working on. I'm going to say it again. It's the magic of ASUS. Working in ASUS, you can create film looks very easily. And if you guys do want to learn more about that, then check out the training uh, that I did. Um, it's a free webinar, one hour long. So check it out. Link is in the description. So now what we're going to do is we're going to kill all of this. And uh, we're going to put it back in this mode. We started with our curve, which really just dialed in the actual colors we mess with our HSL curves later, but we started with the custom curve to like really dial everything in. And then let's start naming these. So I did my balance and my exposure here. And then we went and did our balance and exposure and you saw the magic of printer lights coming to rescue as always. And then we went in here and uh, this one we'll just call it uh, unsharpen. And uh, it added a lot of that character, right? Like this characteristic with the entire image where it's just very soft. It added that to our image and made it really soft and flowy. And then we went in here and uh, added our glow. And that really just made the whole thing sing. And guys, like I showed you all the new features in the glow. It's mind blowing. I mean, just look at this image. It looks like it was shot on film. So here we are. Let's check out the final look in full screen. Not gonna lie, I absolutely love the way it turned out. It just, it was so simple, so effortless. And that's the whole beauty of using the tools that I showed you here or the drum that I keep beating, which is keeping things simple, don't just jump into qualifiers. A lot can be achieved by what you just saw right here. But obviously, the real unsung hero in here was Asus Pipeline. And if you want to learn more about that, you know the free training link is down in the description below. Click on it, sign up, check it out. Trust me, it's just loaded with value bombs. So you don't want to miss that. If you're enjoying the content, smash that like button, subscribe to my channel for more awesomeness. If you have any content suggestions, we're going to be doing tons of look recreations moving forward. Drop them down below. I will see you guys in the next video.